In this video I'll tell you everything you need to know about one of the most efficient methods to improve your photography. Criticism is totally underrated, but with the right handling you will massively improve your photography. Criticism is amazingly powerful if you use it in the right way. We should be careful because when we use it in the wrong way it destroys. But when we use it in the right way your photography could take off to the next level. And I think criticism always gets a little bit misunderstood and so it's really important to understand that there are different types of criticism. But before we go into detail let me tell you a little story what really happened by the way and what will lead me to the first tip I want to give you. Some time ago I took part to a social group and one day I saw that one member got criticized by another one. I don't have the photograph to show you that got criticized. I don't, I don't want to harm anyone or make anyone bad or something like that. That's not what I, I want to do with this video. But just let me tell you it was a landscape photograph and one really important element of the photograph was placed straight at the edge of the photograph. And if you consider the rule of space, you know all elements need a little bit of space between and also do the edge. And what's really interesting is when the one member posted the photograph into the group, it took just a few seconds that another member wrote, this element is too close to the border. And I thought, that's really interesting, from the point of view of the rule of space. And he also meant, you should engage with the rule of thirds to get better photographs. And then I thought, that's really interesting. If he really would place it more into the picture, it would even tell another story. And then I, I thought, is this really what the photographer wanted to tell the viewers? And as I already mentioned, I don't have the photograph to show you, but I found something else. I had a look at my photographs. If you remember my photograph where I went up a mountain to photograph a fantastic red sky image. It was a, an amazing day of red sky, by the way. If you haven't seen the video, I will link it above. So this is the photograph I took up there. It's not the, the red sky photograph. Obviously, it's a photograph I took, not sure, two or three hours before the, the red sky, something like that. I'm not 100% sure. It was already uh, with the setting sun, so we can see we have the mountain at the left straight in the shadow and we have this tiny church here, what is fantastic illuminated with a nice side light from the left. And I'm really happy with this photograph, to be honest, but what you don't know is I had a second composition for this one. So what I did is, I had need much more focal length to be honest and I didn't have it with me and so I just cropped in from the right hand side and when we have a look at it, it looks like that. And to be honest, back then I decided for the first version because yeah, it was also a rule breaker to be honest. The church was in the middle of the frame and from the point of balance we have this amazing mountain at the left what lands the photograph a little bit to the left but it's not my intention to balance a photograph exactly to the center because when I bring a photograph a tiny bit out of balance I tell another story. It gives a little feeling of uncomfortableness if you want and I can boost this effect even more if I cut the photograph at the right side. So as we, as we see here, so we have the church in this case very, very right in the photograph and usually this is not a good idea because yeah, we are too close to the edge. But in this case, it gives us exactly this tiny bit of uncomfortableness and it also gives us an amazing scale here in this photograph. The mountain also is cut up there and 
we don't know how big it really is. So in this case, yeah, it's really a great photograph. We also have this layering here. We have this darker hill in the foreground. We have this illuminated layer in the midground with the rock at the left and the really bright church in the right and the mountain at the top left. And the interesting thing is this tiny church, it's really a bright point in my photograph and this balances with this big area at the left side of the mountain. So I think it's really a strong composition. I show you this photograph here now because it remembers me a little bit to the criticism what the mention photographer got in the social group I mentioned before. And I think it's really comparable. And I think in that case the member didn't get a positive effect out of the criticism he got for his photograph. I think it's a good idea to discuss about photographs, but it should not be reduced to rules only. I think we should more talk about why did the photographer photograph in that way he did? What did he want to tell us? What did he feel when he photographed the photo? Which emotions are evoked in the one or other viewer? I think such things are much more interesting than just to reduce a photo to rules. Don't get me wrong, I also think that it's interesting to discuss about rules. Why did the photographer use this rule and not that one? Maybe. And so my first tip to you is discuss with other photographers about your photographs, but never let your photographs reduce just to rules. This doesn't help you. And on that point, I also think that criticism is misunderstood a little bit. And I think this is based on the way how we get into touch with rules in our life. So when we think about our school time, for example, and when I think about mathematics, for instance, it was not enough just to solve the exercise. We really had to solve an exercise in exactly that way what our teacher wanted. So there is not really a place for creativity. Or when I think in my English teacher, <laughs> I remember exactly, I think I will never forget this lesson. We read any English book, I'm not sure what it was, but the teacher asked any question to his pupils and I was the one and only who rose his hand. I was so proud about this. And then I gave the answer and my teacher meant, this is right, but I will give you a minus because British would never say it in that way. So and I thought, what's the matter? I'm the British. <laughs> but however, and so just for the case, Mr. Myers, if you should watch this video, as you can see, I'm currently speaking English here and I'm absolutely sure I do it in a way what British would never do. But the thing is, the most can understand me. So <laughs> I'm rather a little bit more creative. I invent my own words. If you have seen my videos, you know what I mean. But obviously, let's be honest, in school it's important to follow rules. But the problem is, photography is not mathematics. It is not English or something else where we really have to follow rules. We just have built up rules that the one or other things are easier to come into. It's good to know that there is something like a rule of thirds or a golden ratio or a rule of space or to make the horizon straight. It helps beginners to come into photography and get out with better photographs in the very beginning. But in my experience, it's much better to engage with the scene I want to photograph, to think about what do I want to express. And maybe it could be that I think about a rule, but this is an exception for me. I really just want to express something or I want to convey mood to evoke emotions at the viewers. And I think that's really, really important to understand. Photography is not mathematics. There is no photography police out there or something like this. Or you don't will get a bad mark when you break a rule or if you even don't use any rules. And now it gets interesting. This is really difficult if you want to criticize anything because you need any base to discuss. So to say this photograph is bad because it didn't hold on to any rules doesn't really make sense for me. And this is what I meant before. Discuss about the why. Why did the photographer do it in that way or in that? And as already mentioned, there are different types of criticism and this is really, really important because it's a difference who gives the criticism. And let's say, for example, it is a non-photographer. 
This would mean that he doesn't know anything about photographs. Oh, I, I think it's, it could also work with, a, with an artist maybe, with a painter or something like this. And I also think that it may be also were possible that a musician or something like that could understand a little bit more what the photographer did. It, it, it sounds a little bit strange to be honest, but uh, I'm not a musician, but when I listen to music, I begin, I would not say to understand, but I, I begin to interpret it. I, I understand it for the concept which I built by myself when I listen to this music. And I think it's not so different from photography. So it's a difference if a non-photographer gives criticism or if it does a photographer, for example. So when a non-photographer criticizes anything, it gets difficult because he doesn't understand the concept of your photograph or it will be really hard for him to understand it. So the criticism what a non-photographer could give you will always be unobjective. And this means he could say this photograph is good or this photograph is bad. And to be honest, this kind of criticism doesn't add anything to the photographer. So maybe if someone who doesn't know how photography works tells you, ah, oh, this photograph is so fantastic. Yeah, I think it's not nothing bad with that when you inhale such positive feedbacks and it is not more than a feedback. He doesn't know what you did. And when someone says this photograph is bad or even that's the worst photograph I've ever seen from you, something like that, however, it doesn't matter, uh, this doesn't have any weight. This is nothing I, I really would pay attention to. This is something what goes here in and there out. So in this case, when non-photographers give any feedback, don't pay all too much attention to it. The only exception definitely is when you photograph a customer Finally, the customer should be satisfied with the photograph, obviously. But when the critic is a photographer, it gets interesting because he knows a little bit about photography or really much about photography, however. But it is also not so easy just to say this photograph is bad or this is good. So also in this case, when you get an unobjective criticism, I also wouldn't pay all too much attention to such a comment because, yeah, how, how should he know this? It, it's your photograph. And we always talk about a piece of art. We don't talk about a snapshot or something like this, or let's say when the grandmother takes a photograph of her grandchild. We don't talk about that. We really talk about a photograph as an art. And so how could it be that anyone really thinks about the composition, tries to get up the best? How could it be that anyone says this photograph is bad? This is simply wrong, because that one who photographed it gave his best. So it, it's not possible that it's a bad photograph, that's impossible. And also here it's not more than a feedback. The only thing is when a photographer gives a criticism and it is not an objective, but objective. This means he really says maybe this church is too far at the edge. It has more weight. It is objective. And now let's imagine the following situation. Let's imagine you have been out for photography and you realize that you got to the next level of photography, maybe because you have watched one of my videos, whatever. <laughs> and you're really proud about your photograph. And what you do is you post it on Instagram and you're so happy about it and you get some positive feedback and so on. And suddenly you get one comment, one person who says that church is too close at the edge. So you could imagine you will definitely not feel all the well because before you were really in this positive feeling, you got to the next step, it was so fantastic. And there comes one person and he says, it's not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? In this case, a criticism like that could be destroying. And I really can recommend never criticize like that. Never comment on Instagram, the church is too much at the edge or the lines are not there where they should be or that is not balanced or whatever. This is not the right way to criticize. It just destroys. And so there are also two possibilities. The one way is that the criticism is public so that everyone can read it. And I think this is done mostly from people who want to harm the photographer, who load the photograph up. 
There are also exceptions, obviously, that the critic really wants to help, but in most times that's not the case. So you really shouldn't do it like that. The other possibility where that you don't make it public, so that you just write him a direct message on Instagram maybe, let's stick with this example here on Instagram, and you write him, hey, the church is too close at the edge. And what here happens is, as I already mentioned before, how should you know what the photographer wanted to express? So it doesn't really make sense in that way. So it definitely will not destroy in that amount which it had done in the public area where everyone can read. But anyway, it really doesn't add to the photographer. He doesn't have any positive effect. He just knows that the other photographer would do it in another way. And the really problem now gets if the photographer who took the photograph is not experienced all too much. It could be that he just believes what the better experienced photographer says and he would do hard to find his own style, to find his way to express his mood, to evoke emotions in the viewers. So I also wouldn't recommend to criticize like that. And by the way, the public way, if you ever should get bad comments, uh, also just a comment like this photograph is bad or something like this is absolutely no go. And also if there, is, uh, if there are reasons inside why it is bad or what he, should, what he would do else or something like this, it is not a neutral discourse. It is a negative thing. I'm not sure where I read about it, but I read about it anywhere. The origin of such comments is hate. And hate, in most cases, is based on jealousy. And this is often done then when the critic sees you as a kind of competitor or something like this. So this means when you break it down to this point, this really means that it's kind of compliment. So if anyone tells me in the public that my photograph is bad or that it were better to do it like that and that and that because that is not good and whatever. In that case, when I see it from the point that it is jealousy, I think it were maybe a kind of compliment. So if it's not okay to give criticism public and also not with a direct message, so how could we give criticism? And the answer therefore is there exists something that can unask criticism and then ask criticism. So this means that I never would criticize a photograph what anyone took and doesn't matter if he shows it on Instagram or whatever, I never would criticize. But when the photographer asks me what I would do in his case when I had taken the photograph, so for example, when you visit one of my workshops, obviously we discuss about photographs and I think it's the sense of taking part of my workshop to understand how I work and so on and of course there we discuss about the photographs, but again, there doesn't exist anything like a right and a wrong. It is art and there are so many possibilities. It always depends what you want to express, which kind of mood you want to convey and so on. And so the only way to give criticism is when the photographer asks another photographer or even another artist. I think it were also interesting if a painter would discuss with a photographer. Well, really interesting. And also, I could also imagine when a musician would discuss with a photographer. It could also be really interesting, I think. So, and before we come to the most powerful method of criticism, let me tell you how you can benefit from giving criticism. And what I found out is it massively improved my photography when I started to engage with the photographs of other photographers to engage with the style of other photographers, to understand the concepts. Why does he photograph like that? And why doesn't he do it like that? And when you give criticism, that's really, really important. The goal is not that you are right against the other photographer. The goal is much more to understand why he photographed it in that way, why his style works like that and not else. And the really interesting thing is, it doesn't matter on which level of photography you are and the one is who get criticized. So it's really amazing and I realized this when I started to give workshops. So I started to engage with photographs of each level of photographer and I really felt that I was able to improve my photography independent on which level each photographer stood. It could be a beginner, an advanced or a master. And it also doesn't matter on which level of photography are you. 
and my photographic horizon exploded. The only thing you should consider for the photographer who get criticized, it's better when the other photographer who gives the criticism has more experience because he will benefit more from the photographer who has more experience, obviously. So now let's come to the most powerful method of criticism. And there exists one person on this planet who is able to give the best criticism to your photos. And it's not me, by the way. <laughs> but you see this person every day when you look into the mirror. It's you. Because you are the one and only who really understands your photography, who really understands what do you want to express, what do you want to convey, which mood, which emotions do you want to evoke, which emotions did you have by yourself when you took the photograph out on location. And so in my experience, self-criticism is the most powerful tool from the point of view of criticism. And what I do is, all few months I have a look at my photographs which I took in that time and I try to think about it. I think about what would I do different? Am I happy with this? Which are the things I'm not happy with and so on? And I try to learn from this. I made a video already about this so I will link it above if you haven't seen it. It's really interesting. I also show away there what I do to rate my image. So this really helped me to improve my photography. But I also often have a look at my older photographs, maybe what I've taken the last two years or something like this. And it's really interesting. You, you, you see so many things out. You, you see that your style is changing a little bit. You see that you maybe wanted to express other things than you want to express today maybe. It could be that your emotions changed a little bit to a place or, or to a subject, whatever. It, it, it's, it's really, really interesting. It's absolutely amazing. So in conclusion, we could say criticize other photos, but only if the photographer asks you explicitly after that. Discuss with other photographers about photographs, maybe about your own, about other photographs. Engage with other photographs. Try to think what would you do different. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you see a photograph of another photographer, it could be that you say, hey, I would do it in that way because it's okay, absolutely okay, but it's also okay that the other photographer took it in that way he did. And if it's possible, also ask a photographer who is more experienced than you, that he could tell you his opinion, what he would do different. And very important, criticize your own photographs. By the way, just an idea, if you want, you could leave a comment below with your Instagram name, so if other photographers here read your name, maybe the one or other wants to create an Instagram group where you could discuss about your photographs. It does make sense when your level of photography is on the same one, but it also could work when you have a really mixed group where each level of photography is in. So as I already mentioned, it's up to you. If you want, just comment below, tell us your Instagram name and have also a look at the other photographers and join to any group if you want. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please give it a thumb up. Share this video with your friends, maybe on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. I will really happy about it. It would help me to grow this channel. Subscribe to my channel if you didn't have already. So thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be. Stay with me and I have no doubt. You'll make a painting that makes you proud.